Okay, but here's the thing. And again, Emma, not to offend your people, these are two, what I'm going to call, very posh Brits doing this mm-hmm. fight choreography. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't so much fight as they're like, I say, give me your wrist. Now I should stab my mother. Step, step, mother. Step, step. They do. They look like they're fighting with four broken wrists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God awful movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because once that shows up on your resume, nothing's going to come after it. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us today, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am amazing, Noah! (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's a little more fun than we normally have. We're also excited to welcome skeptical YouTuber, woman who lives in Kent Hobine's mind rent-free, and brand new guest masochist, Emma Thorne. Emma, welcome to God Awful Movies. Hi, thank you for having me. You're quite welcome. It, it occurs to me now that I've said it that lives in Kent Hovind's mind implies a slummy existence that I don't want to saddle you with. So, you know, Paul, I just want to emphasize that that's <laughs> just, we're making a joke. Yeah, there. it's uh, it's unpleasant in here. <laughs> <laughs> but there are no taxes, though, right? You're just a, a right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Freeman on the brain. Tax free. <laughs> this is where the sovereign citizens actually live. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, don't they? Yeah, right. So tell us, Emma, what will we be breaking down today? Well, it depends who you ask. Mm -hmm. I believe you guys watched (laughs) The Chosen. I actually watched Reign of Fire. Oh, really? Because this movie has three different titles. (laughs) And yeah, some other people watched yet another title. (laughs) Yeah, the worst one, Holocaust 2000. I think Reign of Fire is, I think that's the best one, honestly. (laughs) Do you? Okay, all right. So I think, I I honestly, I kind of like Holocaust 2000. I'm going to be honest with you. So Eli... How bad was this movie? Well, if you loved The Omen, but you long for the days when people wore three-piece suits to the mental hospital, (laughs) you will love this movie. Everyone was so weirdly overdressed, and everything was so brown. The 70s were so brown. Yeah. And beige. Yeah. Yeah, right, right, yeah. All the different browns are there, really. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Well, I thought it was the best. It had the best worst reactions just to anything ever. Everybody in this movie <laughs> is really fucking weird. Like, yep, <laughs> they they're like aliens trying to come off as humans, but acting in a movie. Yes, there's just <laughs> they they stare at each other just silently for ages, and nobody thinks that's <laughs> weird. They'll be like something really dramatic or emotional will happen. And then they just walk away without right. yep. no. <laughs> That's so weird. Right. And then they'll just wander off and fuck or something. It'll just be like, what? <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. Why is nobody talking about what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> are you like, there are several times in this movie that like, I would never stop talking about that if that happened in front of me. Right. That's the only <laughs> yeah. thing I would ever fucking talk about. And yeah. And these people have forgotten it by the time they get to the car. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so I was going to go with the obvious one. I can't believe I picked last and neither of you had this. I'm going to go with best worst floppy geriatric penis. Heck yeah! Mm. I'm going to leave that tease just, say, let's say, swaying in the breeze for you. But yes, <laughs> you have a sextagenarian penis to look forward to in this film. Oh, so I was going to go with best worst original title, which, as Emma mentioned, was Holocaust 2000. (laughs) But I'm going to go instead with best worst, ah, the 70s. I have written (laughs) ah, the 70s several dozen times in my notes because there's just there's a pregnant woman doing a hit out of a crack pie. People are just parking (laughs) crosswise into a parking spot. Gas was 36 cents a gallon. It was not even. Yeah, it was a different time. Oh, yeah. No kidding. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, if 1970s cinema was about anything, it was about pausing just all the time and inexplicably. (laughs) So in thematic solidarity, we're going to pause just a little bit ourselves, but we'll be back in a minute with all the spoon fed plot points of The Chosen. I mean, Reign of Fire. Oh, wait, I mean, Holocaust 2000. No, wait, I mean, The Chosen.
Hey, podcast listener, have you spent two years inside trying not to die? Did you get your microchip injection from Bill Gates? Well, then it sounds like you deserve to come to our very first live show of 2022 on May 7th in Toronto, Canada. That's right, Canada. That was Syrup. We'll be breaking down Christianity's worst offerings live, complete with physical bits, microphones, and our bare naked faces. Not that kind of bear. Check the show notes for tickets, but act fast because we haven't done a show for three years and this will sell out. God Awful Movies live in Toronto. Toronto! Toronto indeed. Thanks so much for doing the show, Emma. Oh, no problem. Little help? Oh, God, every time. Hi, Emma. Good to see you. I'd uh, shake your hand, but I'm a little tied up in my Flexitron muscle blaster. Dude, so, uh, why did you even get the Flexitron muscle blaster out? <laughs> <laughs> well, I figured with a, you know, a whippersnapper like Emma coming on the show, I got to keep myself limber and lean. I didn't want to be out muscled by the under 30. Is he 30? At 34. Wow. I, I, I know. It looks really bad. Dude, I've told you before, if you're looking for a realistic way to take care of your body, why not use FitBod? What's FitBod? No matter your goals or experience level, FitBod finds your next best workout. No six-week plans, no shortcuts, no bullshit. FitBod's innovative algorithm learns your goals and experience level, then crafts a personalized training regimen unique to you. Oh, a workout app? Is it full of cringy language about getting shredded and ripped? Nope. FitBot's one-of-a-kind algorithm uses data to create a dynamic fitness plan just for you based on your personal goals, equipment, fitness level, and workout history. It's about getting fit, not ripped or whatever. Flexmaster makes you ripped. So, but does it, though? I ripped a tendon. See, I've actually been using FitBot for a while now. The fact that they can adjust a workout for the equipment I have or how much time I have is awesome. Build your fitness habit and become a better version of yourself with FitBod. Get 25% off your subscription or try out the FitBod app for free when you sign up at FitBod.me slash GAM. That's 25% off your subscription at FitBod.me slash GAM. All right. Well, should we untie him? No, you know, if, if we do that, he doesn't learn. Don't listen, Emma. I'll learn. He won't learn. I will. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on a little speed exposition to the point where, like, I feel like the opening line of the movie and the opening line of the blurb are the same sentence, except one is in the first person and the other's in the third. <laughs> yeah, he's explaining the plot of what the entire movie is going to be about to these guys as he, as they ride to the nuclear power plant he's building. And I wrote in my notes, I feel like you should know how a nuclear power plant works before you get to ride on the helicopter. But that's just me. Or that's just me. <laughs> maybe at least you should know why you're on that helicopter before you're on it over a desert somewhere. It seems like such a weird place to explain the basics. <laughs> but yeah, so he's this is Kirk Douglas. He's the star of the film, and he is going to build a nuclear power plant in just generically the Holy Land. We never mention what country he's in. At one point, he refers to it as this third world area. And I don't think countries like it when you <laughs> refer to them as the third world area to their faces. I think they prefer you don't do that. So this was 1978, Eli. This was before we discovered caring what people in the third world oh. countries thought about what we said in their faces. Sorry. Yeah. So it was a it was a worse time in every measurable way. But he explains how nuclear power plants work. Well, he explains it the way that you would explain it to your grandkids if you didn't know how they worked and you knew they weren't going to check anyway. <laughs> He's like, there's lasers and um, heat. There's heat. Yeah, I still didn't get it. At this point in the film, I still wasn't sure if it was a nuclear power point because the, it wasn't explained to me well enough. <laughs> <laughs> and he brags about it being as hot as the center of the sun. Yeah, well, he said it's the only thing as hot as the center of the sun. And this lovely reporter love interest character would like to take issue with that. Yeah, and she gives the most outstanding shit-eating grin at this like she does like an um actually and uh -huh. it's, it's like oh, oh, it's the heat of a hydrogen bomb and then like gives him this little grin and snaps a photo of his like distressed face kind of think that this character is an icon through the entire thing like that's her introduction absolutely love her so much <laughs> <laughs> no question so yeah so after the helicopter ride kirk meets up with her and he's like so 
I know this is weird because you're like literally half my age. Um, are you the love interest by any chance? And she's like, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, I am. And she is Sarah Golden, who works for Kane Enterprises. Yes. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised that their competitor wasn't Able Enterprises. That's how, <laughs> how on the nose everything was. Mm -hmm. But he's smitten. And so he's like, hey, let me show you a cave youthfully. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's he's doing that like the when old guys are around young women thing where you just, you know, you try to jump fences and shit that you, you know, yeah, I'm like, why the fuck would I do that? I'm in my 40s. Right? He's doing that kind of shit. Yeah, he proper bounds along. It's the only time that he, he runs in the whole film. <laughs> Well, there's, there is another time and we'll talk yes, about it. But he looks much older the other time. I say that. He does. He does. Doesn't he, though? But yeah, so he takes her to this cave that has Jesus carved into the rocks. The name of Jesus carved into the rocks. Yeah. I wrote a joke in my notes. Oh, Jesus carved his name here as a teen. It will be so much dumber than that. <laughs> Yeah, so they go into this cave and she's like, wow, this could be the cave of the vision. And he's like, uh, what is this, like the backstory of the movie? She says, it's exactly the backstory of the movie. Yeah, let me give it to you right quick. Yeah. She tells him about the 10 headed crown wearing monster. And I'm going to call this like the yoke on the shoulders of this movie. Because look, when you're dealing with Bronze Age people who can't read or write, I'm sure the description of this monster is very scary. Except <laughs> in modern times, it sounds fucking ridiculous. It sounds like they ran out of ideas for Pokemon. And <laughs> it's going to be the scariest part of this film, apparently. Yes, this is the legendary seven-headed, ten-horned. Each horn has its own crown monster from the Book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. This is the cave, apparently, where I they, where John had that revelation. I guess I don't know. I guess yeah, sure. Because why not? I mean, she completely trusts this random dude that is just like, "Hey, do you want me to show you something amazing I just found? Look, it's a perfectly <laughs> neat, fresh carving of Jesus." What are you? It's like, oh yeah, it's definitely prophecy, cave of prophecy, no doubt. Right? Yeah. Let me follow you into this dark cave, man. I just fucking met. Yeah. So, okay, now we fast forward to the official, like, dynamiting of the ancient grave ceremony, right? Because they have to, like, clear out this. Oh, well, we just if we just clear out this area here with all these Jesus caves and everything, if we just blow that up with dynamite, we can put a nuclear power plant right there. Right. Yeah. And this is the first of many of Emma's best worst where there's just quite a lot of staring. So <laughs> yes. much staring. And nobody or everybody around them is completely oblivious. It's just, it's so weird. It's like they had both agreed to m blow up this mountain, but they were like, I'm worried I'm going to incite the incident of the movie. Well, I'm worried I'm going to incite the incident of the movie. <laughs> well, that's just the thing, right? Because they have this long moment where Kirk stares at Sarah and Sarah stares at Kirk. And it's just like, yeah, but nothing's happened yet. Like, n if they all had read the script already, this makes sense, guys. But otherwise, it's just weird, creepy staring. Yeah. yeah. But of course, he offers the prime minister of, you know, whatever fucking... The third world. Yes, the third world to stand. <laughs> the ability to push the button to actually blow up the ancient haunted grave. So he's like, no, you know what? You you have at that, man. That's your button to press. <laughs> <laughs> and then he stares at Sarah ominously and then he pushes the exploding buttons and we get the fucking starving child B-roll credits. <laughs> Music note, the Pink Panther cures starvation? <laughs> <laughs> this is so fucked up. When did we stop doing shit like this in movies? Because like they're showing us actual footage of children in some kind of like war or famine or crisis or whatever that are starving to death. And it's just like your shitty fucking movie is that kid's legacy. Yes. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, I'm pretty sure people didn't want footage of their dead kids used for the movie Holocaust 2000. I don't care what they signed. Yeah, right. We get the fucking schizophrenic title at this point where it's just like, I don't I It's, it's like it's a title card mystery box. Who the fuck even knows? <laughs> yeah, I got Holocaust 2000. Emma, you got something different, right? Yeah, I got Reign of Fire. Okay, okay. <laughs> I also got Holocaust 2000. Also, my credits started in English and then ended up in Italian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we see over these very long, starey credits that the Jesus Rock did blow up, right? Yeah. So then we cut to this, I guess, okay, there's going to be these protesters that follow 
Kirk Douglas from continent to continent, from work to home, wherever he goes, <laughs> they will be standing outside chanting about how they don't want nuclear power plants. Yeah. And at this first protest, they've all decided to dress up as mimes and skeletons. Yeah, there's the, except for the dancing skeletons. <laughs> yes, right. And it's funny because like they don't ever again, right? Because it's it, so it's very much like they were like, OK, guys, it turned out the skeletons was just a big thing. And that ended up distracting from our general message, I think. So we're not going to do the skeletons anymore. Yeah, next time, let's just we'll come in our regular clothes. <laughs> How about wait, what if we do showers next time? We're not doing fucking showers next time. That movie hasn't even come out yet. <laughs> All right. It was like there was a fancy dress slash Halloween party and they were like, wait a second. I need some crowd shots for my movie. Do you guys have 10 <laughs> minutes? You know, can you chant this ridiculously overlong, stupid chant? All right. Nailed it. <laughs> but of course, the motorcade that's got Kirk and the, and the PM gets through this protest and they go to a nice rich person party. Heck yeah. A lot of this movie is going to just take place in extremely ostentatious wood paneled rooms right mm. but they're all 1970s wood paneled rooms so it'll be like a carpet that looks like a cartoon character spent 40 minutes vomiting on and also <laughs> hard mahogany chairs yeah. and floors <laughs> right yeah uh -huh. so expensive but so tasteless exactly mm -hmm. this is also where we meet a character that i just named franz joseph because he's got the franz joseph beard mm -hmm. he's a protester or he's pretending to be a protester, but he's also wearing a tuxedo under his skeleton outfit. So he's heading into the party. Right? Yeah. This is also where we meet Kirk's son, Angel. And, and we meet him, I think, flirting with his mom. Yeah. He greets his mom with a hello kiss on the neck. We all do that, right? Everyone gives <laughs> their mom a nice uh, sm little hickey to say hi. <laughs> Yeah, and this is, of course, where we meet Kirk's wife. Don't worry, we won't need to bother naming this character. She won't be along, around for long. Well, she can't be. We've already seen a more attractive younger woman, so exactly. she can't right. stick around for that long. <laughs> right, exactly. Yep, yep, she is on her way out. They might as well drop an anvil on her with a picture of the younger actress <laughs> on it. <laughs> but she explains, so we learn here that Kirk Douglas, like, married into this nuclear power company, Apparently, but his wife still controls the majority of the stocks and she's not so sure about this nuclear power plant. She wants to shut it down. And I cannot emphasize how crowded this room is that they are deciding to have this messy. Let's end our marriage slash nuclear power plant relationship in the middle of. Yes. Yes. They're right in the middle of the fucking party that they're hosting, having this loud, yelly fight about the future of their company. I don't love you anymore. They're also they're having this, we're going to shut down the business conversation at the party celebrating the start of the business venture. Yes! Yes! Timing, maybe? <laughs> you have to assume there are investors there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone just reaches in between them with some pigs in a blanket. Pig in a blanket. <laughs> oh, no, you guys, you guys are ending your marriage in this business. Sorry, oh, sorry. No. That's, that's my bad. And then, so Franz Joseph shows up. Turns out he's an assassin, but for some reason, he only brought a paring knife or something. <laughs> tiny. I, I legitimately, th I thought that was a butter knife. When I saw it <laughs> from the side. I was like, is he going to stab this one with a butter knife? I also thought that this part, it was like five minutes of Hitman suddenly, especially when he's like, <laughs> mm -hmm. looking all suspicious walking over to her. Yeah. He stands on a muffin. All of a sudden, nobody can see him. <laughs> Just changes into the mom clothes. Kirk Douglas keeps having a fight with her. When she was the mom. <laughs> but yeah, but just before he can stab Kirk Douglas, who he's aiming for, Angel, the son, sees him. He gets the drop on him. He yells. Dad defends himself. Angel wrestles him and mom gets stabbed to death in the melee. Okay, but here's the thing. And again, Emma, not to offend your people, these are two, what I'm going to call, very posh Brits doing this mm -hmm. fight choreography. <laughs> <laughs> so the, they don't so much fight as they're like, I say, give me your wrist. Now I shall stab my mother. Stab, stab, mother. Stab, stab. They do. They look like they're fighting with four broken wrists. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's amazing. And we should point out that it very much comes off that Angel stabbed his mom, right? Because he's got hold of the guy's wrist and the guy's he's like, you know, trying to like wrestle the, 
the knife and he's like, ah, I'll stick it in my mom's gut here and then he won't be able to move it side to side, you know? Yeah. yeah. And she dies instantly, right? From a stab to the stomach. She dies seconds later. Well, she gets like, they give her like 30 seconds to look dramatic. Well, yes. While they just sort of, they all sit there and watch. And then it's like, oh yeah, she's dead. damn, she's dead. Right, well, yeah, I guess no, there's... Nobody, nobody tries to stop the bleeding, calls nope. an ambulance. It's just like, oh, well, never mind. <laughs> you know, the sirens in England are so annoying. They're just like, let's not, let's be a whole thing. Yeah. And so then we cut to immediately Kirk and Angel looking foggily over mom's graveside. Right. There's the funerals over everyone, but the named characters is going to leave. Yeah. He's like, nice job saving the company, son. Good thing that guy brought a steak knife to murder me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And Angel's like, well, I can't help but feel like this was my fault. And he's like, is it because you were controlling the knife when it went into mom's guts? And he's like, well, I didn't, you didn't have to point that out. But yes. You didn't have to say that, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they're leaving. And then Sarah appears mysteriously in the fog. Okay. I have a question. Did Sarah show up to his wife's funeral to flirt? Yep. <laughs> Couldn't help but notice from the papers that you're uh, single now. Shall we grab lunch? <laughs> and she's like, hey, I brought a clue. <laughs> so she hands him this this envelope, right? And he pulls out the picture that she took in that cave. But in the picture, there's a, a painting of a silly snake monster behind him. This snake monster is the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh my God, I cried. I was laughing so much. And the photo as well. It's just like, it's, it's like, I was just watching it. I was like, if the, if there wasn't a secret big snake monster carving behind her, you'd be like, man, what a shitty photographer. Right. Yes. Why did <laughs> you, you even know, take this cane all down at the bottom? It <laughs> looks terrible, but it's framed perfectly with the monster in the picture. It is. It looks like someone tried to make Dark Souls inside the Spelunky engine, right? It's just like a Spelunky multi-headed <laughs> boss. It looks like something like if if fucking Grover went on a quest and had to kill a dragon, right? This yes. is what he yeah. would come across. Yeah. So, OK, then we head out to the, oh, God, 1978 Insane Asylum, <laughs> right? Where all the walls are glass and everybody is wearing a vest. It's knife having day at the asylum. Uh, we thought it'd be a good time for you to talk to the guy who tried to murder you. This is such a stupid setup. They're like, Kirk, we needed you to come in here and talk to the guy who stabbed your wife to death in hopes that he'll tell you his name because we can't figure it out. What? Why the fuck would he tell him? <laughs> I don't. Uh, why are they doing this in in the glass cages full of other <laughs> mentally ill people staring? Like, are, are they OK? What's why <laughs> any of this? Just why any of this? They're cosplaying. And and then it's like, well, you know, this guy did try to kill me. You you certainly have security guards here, right? He's like, we have what? We would, we, would, we would have why? We have security guard. I don't, I don't see why we'd need more than one. No, we just that yeah. seems wasteful. We just threw this guy in with all these other dudes. We don't really. I don't know. We just leave them to it. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, no, I'll go. I'll go talk to the guy paid to kill me that murdered my wife. Sure, why not? And so he starts going all like evil, crazy guy or whatever. And he's like, he's pointing at Kurt, going, "That is the origin of all evil." And then all the other insane people also start to. Stim ferociously, I guess. And then he attacks. Yeah. We have yet more slow motion fight choreography. And he spends quite a long time punching, I, I guess, the doctor mm -hmm. instead. Like, <laughs> he's like, you are the origin of evil. And then he leaves him alone to punch this other dude. <laughs> With three other guys that he beats up first. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to work my way up. You're like the main, you're like the boss. He's the boss. Fight, so. <laughs> Good. Now that we can't be interrupted, I'm not going to punch you, surprisingly. <laughs> but by the time he turns to attack Kirk, he's armed himself with this goddamn comically tiny little piece of glass from somebody's eyeglasses. It's <laughs> genuinely hilarious because you can see them looking down and there's a moment where they're like, you're not going to pick that up and use it as a weapon, right? It's literally smaller than your thumb. And he's like, <laughs> it's like the little, like when you're, you're done, there's no real potato chips left in the bag. You know, <laughs> but you still want one. It's that size. If you ever get a fancy drink that has the cocktail sword in it, and then you go over to your friend and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's that. It's slightly more silly than that. 
And Kirk's like, well, I guess if I'm the source of the evil, you're going to kill me, huh? And he's like, no, I'm going to actually cut my wrists with this glass. <laughs> and then run myself into a window like a bird. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And apparently come away from this just fine. He will later be fine and not even scarred. Anyway, and then this is probably the weirdest reaction we've had to this point. Kirk walks away, right? He's just like, well, that was fucking weird. And he walks off and we have this incredibly long, awkward walking away shot that serves no purpose in the movie. (laughs) Yeah. And it's silent. It's just the sound of his footsteps. It's so (laughs) fucking awkward. Right. The music cuts out and it's just like the awkward walking away bit. (laughs) Were you guys trying to hit a a, a minimum number of minutes here? Okay, guys. Kirk says he'll be in the movie, but only if he can hit his steps on his Fitbit. So we have to put in (laughs) a certain amount of walking. (laughs) So... uh. All right, so the next day we have Kirk and Angel. They're at the airport waiting to fly, I guess, home. I don't even fucking... Oh, no, he's flying out back to the third world Yep. Mm -hmm. to sort some shit out. But Angel has some ideas about their nuclear plant. Apparently, he's a a hobbyist nuclear physicist. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, and can I just say, this doesn't pertain very much to the plot. I just love that this film goes along with the the universal idea we have of like the Antichrist and the devil as a fashion icon. Yes. I love yes. Angel's heels in the scene. He has like amazing flares. Yeah. It's just oh, always on point fashion. Collarless shirts. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where it is in my notes, but at all times, Angel is dressed like a 17th century duelist. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's about to play tennis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I need Cyrano de Bergerac to be whispering all of his lines into his ear for the rest of this movie. So Kirk Douglas goes like, well, you realize that you'd be doing extra dangerous nuclear fusion, right? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, all right, I like it. This is great. I like it. <laughs> Up and comer. <laughs> yeah, but we learned here also that the prime minister of the third world lost his election. And so now there's a new prime minister that doesn't want them to make their nuclear power plant anymore. Spoiler alert, a series of less and less important people will spend the rest of the movie getting in the way of their nuclear power plant. Yeah. (laughs) By the end of this movie, the Antichrist is just like killing a janitor whose heart isn't in his job. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, so we we head back to Desertistan or whatever and the new PM is like, I am going to tell you all about how much I oppose your nuclear power plant. He's like, Do we have to do this in the middle of the desert? You guys have rooms. I know (laughs) it's the third world, but like you have. I brought a table. (laughs) I brought a model. A little model of the nuclear power plant and everything. Looks nothing like a nuclear power plant, but whatever. But uh, he's like, no, PM, I will explain to you why it's fine. And he's like, no, I have a whole sheaf full of refutations. Apparently the love interest is here and she's got them. Right. Okay. But. It's way too windy for anyone to hold paper yes. in this scene. So she like walks two inches from his chest and like gently and he clutches it and he's like, yep, got it. And he's like, are you going to open it? And he's like, not if we want to get this in one day. I'm fucking not. I just love that Kirk Douglas is like, he's like, let's just listen to remind you, this is the third world and we could absolutely civilize you guys with with my amazing power plant. And the prime minister's like, well, yeah, I know, but. Yes, yes. <laughs> he's like, I, I, I recognize that the white man is quite burdened, but yes. So. <laughs> and he goes like, can you promise that you won't blow up the earth? And Kirk's like, I can, I can promise that I will try not to blow up the earth. <laughs> This is also, and I, God, I don't, I don't know if our younger listeners will be aware of this. This is where the movie posits the nuclear plant chain reaction theory, which was an actual real fear people had about nuclear power back in the day, which is that if one nuclear power plant blew up, all the other ones would blow up. No, okay. So <laughs> what, the fear that they had is that if a nuclear power plant blew up, then people would mistake that from a for a nuclear attack, and all of a sudden Russia would launch a bunch of shit at the U.S. and the U.S. would launch a bunch of shit at Russia. That was the fear. Oh, okay. Sorry, that is actually sillier than my theory. <laughs> so. <laughs> but that's it. Like everybody so opposed to this, including this prime minister who's giving him this report, and even he says his report is like. 
yeah, we don't understand science. We don't know anything about science. Yep. This is all based on our irrational fears. And it kind of makes me like root for the evil nuclear plant guys. The whole for sure. fucking time. Because they're just, they're so irrational. Yes. I'm like, yeah, because this is all like just a, the whole movie is just an Italian propaganda, anti-nuclear propaganda film in a lot of ways. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So Kirk is unsatisfied by his meeting with the prime minister. So he heads back to the board to discuss how to move forward in a very last suppery kind of a table shot. <laughs> all right, I don't, I don't know why we all decided to um, sit on the same side of the table. <laughs> uh, is someone doing a PowerPoint? Oh, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So he, but he tells all his board members, his twelve board members, by the way. Which they say, that's not us counting either. They say out loud, just to hammer it in, that there are <laughs> yes. you 12 gentlemen, he says. Yeah, So he's, but they explain that this is going to make that Geneva conference very tricky. They will talk so goddamn much about this Geneva fucking conference and this fucking movie. We will never, ever go to the goddamn Geneva <laughs> conference. It's so nope. stupid. Sure won't. Yeah. But Angel has an idea, right? He's like, hey, what if you went to the Geneva Convention with the Nobel Prize winning nuclear scientist Ernst Meyer, if you had his endorsement, why I'm sure everybody would get behind your nuclear plant, right? Yeah. All right. So then we cut immediately to Kirk meeting with Dr. Meyer. Uh, and the doctor's like, well, you know, I, I would want to like check all your stuff before I would endorse it. He's like, oh, wow, that's a whole fucking thing. <laughs> oh, well, you need to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to talk about this, Doctor. I'm sure something happened in this scene, but I, I was entirely distracted by the fact that the professor character gets diverted mid-conversation to yell at a student. Yes. Yeah. That will never come back. It will never matter. He's just like, well, I'll tell you, Dr. Mr. Oh, one second. Fuck you, Jenkins. <laughs> Fuck you right in the face. I hate you. Anyways, he's about supposed to be like the really good guy too. He's supposed to be like the the one the righteous one who's correct and gets mm -hmm. thwarted. But so they just throw in three seconds of him being a dick to a student in front of these guests. It's like why? Yeah, well, it, it, and it clearly it's because either the writer or actor or director was just like, you know what, I, you need to do something teachery. Why don't you berate this student for something? <laughs> oh, I also just loved looking at the faces in this scene. I mean, this is the 70s when you could be a movie star, even if you aged like an avocado left in a glove box in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we cut to, I would say, I would argue, possibly the star of the movie, the Laser Gravitron set. Yes! Laser Tag Center Computer Building. No, it's the Crystal Maze. It's definitely okay. the Crystal oh, Maze. Yes. Yep, fair. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so he goes, Kurt goes to this weird computer thing, and, and this is like the 1978 idea of what a computer is. So there's these giant like laser light neon fucking light shit things everywhere for no tubes. goddamn reason there's a computer tubes <laughs> yeah they need to be in, in, in they have to send the electricity into them yeah, yeah. they're in some weird octagonal room it's so dumb I, I wrote in my notes ah the 70s when movie computers were somewhere between a light show and an rv <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they're checking the the all the safety stuff with the computer, but then the computer gets angry, and it says on their weird little light bright display, two times the square root of two thirty one, right? Now I immediately had to do the math. It's thirty point three nine seven three six eight three zero seven one. It's fucking meaningless, right? But that's that's what it said. And also, by the way. <laughs> the square root symbol is backwards. They, <laughs> yeah. they didn't get yeah. it right. We'll get to the meaning of this later. It is so silly. <laughs> it's so, 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 so uh -huh. This entire movie wouldn't have happened if anyone said, can you write Jesus on a calculator? This entire film wouldn't have happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's it. Everybody looks at it. They're like, oh, man, I don't understand why it would say this. This makes no sense. And they're like, yeah, it's going to be the dumbest Imagine it's Jesus backwards. It's I E S U S backwards, and there's no U on a calculator. So we had to like insert a light, bright fucking square root symbol that we did not bother to see <laughs> which way it fucking went. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's also, it's so clearly Jesus. 
yes, I was yes. watching the film as a viewer. You're like, am I smarter than all of these eminent scientists and like computer geniuses that I can tell this is Jesus? And they're all like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> all right. I, I will admit that I didn't realize that until after I'd done the two to the square root of two. I, it's like I did the math <laughs> first, but then I was like, oh, wait, no, I see. Well, and then so then they have this is so stupid. The reveal on it is so silly. So we have Kirk in his plane flying home from wherever the fuck he was. I don't, Look how fucking huge planes used to be. Emma, that's how big planes used. Everyone got their own couch. Yep. That's what a plane. <laughs> there were four seats per airplane. That wasn't even first class. That was four. Yeah. No. And and Damn. it was. It, but but as they're landing, it's like everybody put out your cigarettes and your cigars and your pipes. We're landing <laughs> this <laughs> the sealed tube now. Everyone, please put your box cutters under your seats. And- <laughs> Make sure your guns are safety on. Yeah. Uh, no, wait, this was Europe. Never mind. So, yeah, but but so he's he's sitting on the plane and he's staring at a paper on which he's written the, you know, two square root of 231. And another guy looks from a, in front of him. So he's seeing through the paper backwards. And he's like, ah, <laughs> there's a name that we don't see very often these days. Wait, <laughs> the name he doesn't see very often these days is <laughs> Jesus. He's in Italy. Uh, he's in Italy. He's, he's a, a Catholic, Catholic priest. priest. Yes, yes. He's a goddamn priest. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so he, he says, "What are, what are you talking about? Name? This is just a math problem." And he's like, "No, no. Turn it around. It says Jesus, except with an I, as we established earlier, because there's no J in the Greek alphabet or whatever the fuck it was written in." And he's like, ah, he says, so Jesus is in the computer. He's like, no, if it was backwards, it would be the Antichrist because that's Jesus backwards. And this is where he explains to us that Antichrist is apparently to Jesus as Bizarro Superman. (laughs) Superman. (laughs) There's 21 apostles instead of 12. Yeah, it is. It is opposite Spock with the goatee. That's what the Antichrist is to Jesus. Yes. And so he says, I I love this, too, because this is the only time I really liked Kirk's character in this whole movie is where he goes. He turns to the priest who's telling him all about Revelation and the Antichrist being like bizarro Jesus and everything. He's like, and I quote, do you really believe in this nonsense? And I'm like, you go, boy. (laughs) (laughs) And the priest is like, no, I wear the hat and everything. I wear the whole outfit. And this is where he shows him <laughs> the Bible that was illustrated by my toddler. <laughs> <laughs> He's got this spelunky boss inside the Bible. It's supposed to be like a medieval ancient prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. No, he shows him the picture of the silly and he's trying to explain the Antichrist thing, which I, I am kind of sympathetic to the priest because I've read the Bible and I've read like, you know, what weird shit they think Revelation means. It's like trying to watch a random episode of a Japanese cartoon from season five with somebody who loves that fucking show. Right. right. But yeah, but he's like, but here's the silliest goddamn picture of a seven headed dragon that has ever or could ever exist in the universe. Be terrified. <laughs> And of course, he's like, wait a minute, that's the same image from the photo that Sarah gave to me at the funeral thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then, of course, he goes back to show this to Angel, his son, and I just have this character as Doc. He's the guy in the fucking laser cerebro computer room. And he's like, look, guys, it's Jesus backwards. And they're like, that's fucking dumb. That can't be the plot. (laughs) Yeah, they point out, they're like, you know, literally everyone in history has said they know who the Antichrist was and they've always been wrong, right? And he's like, yeah, but it's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love this Doc character. It's, and his opening is just to laugh hysterically at it for like five minutes. And I'm yes. like, that's me. <laughs> yes, our analog in the film. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it, the Doc leaves. He's like, all right, you've been smoking too much weed or something. And he leaves And then Angel reaches down and crumples up the backwards Jesus paper evidence. (laughs) So obviously in front of everybody, right? He's like, oh, silly fun. Silly fun. (laughs) Just crumpling. Just mildly crumpling. I'm going to rip this up like a proud boy trying to take out. 
I had to watch that twice. Yes. I did not understand what was going on. I was like, I was like, th- but they're still together, right? They're both in the room. He's still looking at him while yes, he's crumpling yes. the paper. And it's like, yep, he's definitely looking right at him while he does that. Eye to eye. <laughs> all right. Well, apparently that's all the plot we're going to get. So we might as well take a break there, but we'll be back in a flash with even more of The Chosen. So the the YouTube is fun? Yeah, I mean, we don't call it the YouTube. but Because uh, there's more than one? No. Hey, guys, ready to record more of the show? Oh, for sure. All right. Uh, just need a little bit of help unpacking this. Wow, <sighs> that's a lot. What? What is it? Oh, uh, this is my emotional baggage. Uh, do you want to start with my mom stuff? Uh, if you can help me uh, out with Eli, it. maybe it's not the best idea to unload all your emotional baggage on people that we've just met. But I'm a person on the internet. What am I supposed to do with it? Well, you could talk this stuff out with a licensed professional therapist from BetterHelp. What's BetterHelp? Wow, two points. First episode. We're just giving her two points. Huh? Ignore him. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Just saying points matter. Maybe ask okay, next so time, Emma. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. All right. Well, I guess you'll be keeping this emotional baggage. Eh, you're also a person on the internet. I'm pretty sure holding this is your job. Oh, he's, he's got you there. So it all started when I was four, right? Oh, uh, Okay. <laughs> yes, Prime Minister. Very good. We'll speak tomorrow. Excellent. Thank you. Dark Lord? Yes, Jephethus. Maragoth. How can I help you? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Dark Lord Antichrist. We have some uh, uh, questions. Yes, about what? Right. It's about your backwards Jesus thing. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I, I do. Come on. He had 12 disciples, so you have 21. Your name is his name backwards. Right, right. What about it? Well, I just, I, 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 don't you feel like it's a little much? Um, how so? Well, so like yesterday, you made that guy go blind because, you know, Jesus healed the blind. That was awesome. Right, okay, so, but then the next night you gave us bacon and apple cider as dark communion. What, what was that? It's the opposite of bread and wine. The opposite of bread is bacon? It, uh, uh, that was what I was... Is it not? And so, okay, and then last week you walked under the water? That's just swimming, man. I can swim. F- fine, fine. Okay, I admit I took the opposite Jesus stuff a little far. From now on, I'll just do normal evil guy antichrist stuff. Okay, so the the circle fell with the blood in your office. You can get rid of it. But I'm not going to use thank it. Thank you. I'm, I'm not going to use it. Circle filled with blood? It's uh, the opposite of crucifixion. Right. Got it. Would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up on Kirk leaving work and damn it if the protesters aren't there as well. Now, we didn't talk about this the first time the protesters show up, but their call and response is so goddamn terrible. <laughs> like one guy will say, what do our children want to be when they grow up? And everybody will say, alive. alive! And like, I mean, they ha- that's part of growing up. You can't grow up if you're dead. Like, that doesn't even make sense. But also, it's like four syllables too long. So the guy who's shouting keeps running out of breath. It's like, what do our children want to be when they grow up? <laughs> it's like running out of breath mid wee. You know, anyway, yeah. it just doesn't. It's worth it, though, because there's a moment when some of the placards overlap. <laughs> yes. And uh, the alive one goes out of shot and it says, what do our children want to be when they grow up? Radioactive. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was great. <laughs> I didn't. I know they were all holding them at different heights and shit. You had to really want to read the whole thing to get yeah, exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So Kurt goes by them. He jumps in his car. He's just driving off, and then Sarah pops out of his back seat like a goddamn whack a mole. <laughs> right? Oh my god, it's awful. How does he not freak the fuck? He's just like, oh hey, I would hit. Everything. I was like, Jesus, oh my god. 
I would be so on the sidewalk, half in the next building. Jesus fucking Christ. And he is just entirely nonchalant. Totally unfazed. <laughs> to be clear, this woman has popped up in a secret cave, mm -hmm. his wife's funeral, <laughs> and now his, I assume, locked car? Right. Which, <laughs> so the, the implications of this are insane to me. At least for some amount of time, she was laying in his hot ass fucking car, down, like low enough on the seat that he didn't see her as he got in. She must have fucking broke into the car for this. Just lying there being like, I'm going to get him so good. I'm going to get him so good. <laughs> <laughs> And also, she's just like, this is a, you, this could have been an email kind of situation, right? Because she's just like, I want to warn you that the PM is going to do everything he can now to stop your nuclear power plant. And he's like, yeah, we had a, a whole scene about that. You were in it. Yeah, you were in it. It's totally scene. redundant. <laughs> but Kane still is like polite enough, I guess, to act shocked. And it's like, it's like the, the prime minister literally said to your face, I'm going to do everything in my power to stop this. Yes. Why? I don't understand why this is news. Well, great. I hid in your car. I Just so you know, I urinated back there. So don't. <laughs> there's a Gatorade bottle in your backseat. I'm going to take it with me. Just be cool. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And he's like, well, don't worry. I'm going to call Dr. Ernst Meyer on my 1978 car phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the car phone made me happy. We love the car phone. <laughs> oh, God. it's so, I'm so old. I remember when my dad had one of those. So, all right, they get to the airport where the bad guy prime minister or good guy, whatever, is about to hold a press conference. Like the second he steps off of his plane or sorry, not his plane, his helicopter. That's key to this scene. Mm -hmm. Right after he steps off his helicopter, he's going to deliver a speech about how he's not going to let that nuclear power plant go forward. Yeah, and the news is narrating it. They're like, ah, oh, yes, the prime minister deciding to wear his great big red target suit today. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's everyone gets a loaded gun at the airport day today. Right, yeah, so he goes to do his press conference, right? And then th they're trying to set up that something ominous and terrible is about to happen. But, like, until it happens, it's just wind. Yeah. yeah. So, we, we like, we see an ominous wind sock. I was going to say, it's very <laughs> hard to do an ominous wind sock. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like someone's taking a trophy after killing Where's Waldo. It doesn't quite have the same <laughs> punch to it. It's also cutting back and forth between, uh, you know, the ominous wind and Kane and Sarah just looking so chill and happy. And they're just like... She's like, I guess I'm going to lose my job. And he's like, I guess I'm going to lose my power plant contract. <laughs> oh, well, let's watch the news. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like still trying to build tension somehow. <laughs> right. No, no need to ruin your whole day about it. But then just as we're all going like, wait, what is the wind going to do? Is it going to impale him? Is he going to fly off because of a gust? No, the helicopter. Is <laughs> the blades of the helicopter are going to get caught in the wind and swing around as it starts. <laughs> And cut the very top of the PM's head off. Realism. <laughs> it's so weird. You know how sometimes there's like a strong gust of wind and the helicopter blades go fast enough to decapitate a man? <laughs> That's what happens. It's like taking the top off an egg. That's what yes. it's like. <laughs> right. It's he split him like a coconut. That's the thing. E like even <laughs> beheading would be more realistic because like, you know, the head comes off fairly easily at the neck compared to splitting the skull in half. <laughs> I really thought he was going to blow up. I was like, watch, because they have all these shots of the pilot at the controls. And you're like, oh, somebody in there is going to blow it up. And then when his head came off, I just lost my mind. I cackled so much. <laughs> it's just oh, so bizarre. Like a, like, a, like a bottle of Excedrin being opened. It was just amazing. Oh, yeah. So and then after that happens, after this incredibly gruesome death, Kirk and Sarah drive away. And, and at first, I, my, my notes are like, Wow, they're going to have to have that awkward, hey, did you think a magical antichrist spell was behind that partial beheading thing? But they don't. They just kind of smile very inappropriately and then go, fuck. There's literally a like a four second pause. And then he's like, so what do you want to do for lunch? Tie? I'm going to tie. <laughs> tie would be great, right? <laughs> yeah, he takes her to his, to his uh, hidden secluded fuck cabin. Right. She's like, oh, there's a baby deer here. I guess this is the prelude to a sex scene. He's like, it's weird that those two things are associated. But yes. 
I was so hoping the baby deer was going to cough up a helicopter blade that cut her head off. <laughs> <laughs> Kicks her right between uh, the eyes. Can we just say as well, we say cabin, but it's like a big fucking beautiful modern house in the woods. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like, it's very primitive. It's a fucking like another mansion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a very primitive. It doesn't have a TV. It's like, all right. Mm. I, I've seen your TVs. Come on. <laughs> it was primitive one way or the other. It's the 1970s. Yeah. And they needed their own laser disc room. <laughs> so, yeah. So the deer's like, well, so they start kissing. The deer's like, well, I'm not getting any more fucking hand fed grass. I'm, I'm fuck out of here. Ah, the 70s when the love interest was literally young enough to be the lead's granddaughter. Well, I don't know about that. She was, I think, 30 years younger than him, though. 31 years age difference. The only time a woman that age should be pressing her mouth to a man that age's mouth is mouth to mouth resuscitation. <laughs> Yeah, so he but he heads to work where the protesters are still there, still haven't come up with a better chant. And looking less enthusiastic per scene, can I just yes. say? There's one dude who like half heartedly throws his fist in the air. They're like walking slower. I feel like the extras were just like so done at this point. So we need a shorter chant, man. We're exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> that Gatorade? No, don't drink that. Can we <laughs> So, yeah, and then so he gets into work. He sees that Angel, his son, his adult son that is the same age as his girlfriend, is already at work hard at chewing people out over blueprints, right? Because <laughs> they think that's what being the boss properly is. Yeah. <laughs> Yelling at people over papers. And the point of this scene is that Kirk's doing the like, ask me if I got laid last night. Come on. Ask me if I got laid last night. <laughs> Okay, first ask me, was she a couple years younger than you? Because she was. She was a couple years younger than you. And bearing in mind, his wife just died. His wife, that yeah. is Angel's mum. And he's just like, yeah, I, I needed a change from your very recently deceased mother. Yes. Do you remember that hot press attache we just met? It's just about your age. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah, right. And on top of that, like, keep in mind again, the day before they all witnessed a man on the news get his head chopped off while he was right there. I'm having a great week. I'm having a great week. First, your mom gets stabbed, <laughs> which, let's be honest, by you. Then, <laughs> guy doesn't want my contract, got his head cut off yesterday, and now I'm having sex with someone two generations below me. It's great. <laughs> so, yeah, and then so the very next scene, him and Sarah are moving in together, right? Yeah. So he's all the way over his wife, I guess, and we get the poorly executed chair antics Right. <laughs> well, it's the 1970s. And so she's like, e -e, you put your foot through a chair. And he's like, you bitch, I'll choke you to death. And we're like, oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> the Kent Hovind school of roughhousing. Yes, right. <laughs> right. Oh, you laugh. Well, I'm going to playfully rape you. Jesus Christ, man, stop. And then, but luckily the doorbell rings. Uh, we don't have to watch that. Angel shows up for lunch. Yeah, and again, he is dressed like Kanye West during his least harmful breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> and also, they're having dinner. Angel very casually mentions how much he fucking hated his mom. And I'm like, you do stabbed her, dude. I just feel like you just leave, keep that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and then, apropos of nothing, Kirk is like, oh, hey, fun fact, while we're all having a little dinner together. <laughs> When you were born, you had a twin who died very dramatically. That's the word he uses, mm -hmm. very dramatically. <laughs> and I wrote in my notes, like, like he got eaten by the shark in Deep Blue Sea. What do you think? So, so I, I was assuming that he had a long monologue, you know, like he overplayed it or something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, and he's like, he's like, oh, by the way, son, I never told you that your mum blamed you for the death of your infant brother. Like, I feel like Angel, even Sans being the Antichrist, he has every right to go nuclear and blow up the planet at this point, honestly. Yes. Absolutely, for sure. Amen. Three body problem, this shit. <laughs> so now we're back at Kirk's office. <laughs> this is so silly. So Angel has written a report on the safety of the nuclear power plant. And we have to, like, have him dramatically read it. But since you can't have somebody dramatically read it, Angel has recorded it on a cassette tape so that we can watch him listen. We can listen along with him. I really wanted it to finish. And then it's like, Audible hopes you've enjoyed this. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where the movie does its big reveal. Now, we have seen the model 
of this nuclear power plant a number of times, but we haven't described to you why there are seven big round, let's call them heads, each of which has 10 like <laughs> protruding, let's call them horns. And we like, we set this up for like eight fucking minutes Right. Where like he, 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 the tape will say each will have seven things that have 10 crowns on each one of it, blah, blah, blah. And then we'll hear the priest from earlier going, the beast will have seven heads and 10 crowns. D you didn't get it. You didn't get that. Let's do it again. Let's do that again from the top. OK, if you took the brown acid at Woodstock, this is going to take some doing. So we'll superimpose the Spelunky monster on top of the thing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And my favorite of the numbers is the uh, the prophecy says uh, and it will rain for 42 months. And that's apparently they mix that up with there will be 42 generator components in the power plant. Like, how did that <laughs> work? Yes. At a certain point, this is how numerological it gets. It's just that as long as the number is the same, it doesn't fucking matter what it's saying. Yeah. yeah. Right. I love the idea of the poor Antichrist trying to shoo in all these terrible numbers. I was thinking <laughs> perhaps we would have 14 buttons on this panel. Well, there's only two devices. <laughs> we need backups. Don't question me. I'll stab you like my mother. <laughs> So and then and now this is also where Dr. Ernst Meyer, who has disappeared mysteriously since he took on the job of, of verifying that this power plant would be fine. He calls Kirk and he's like, hey, I, I need to talk to you. He's like, OK, we're we're on the phone with each other right now. I feel like we could just do that. He's like, nope, not dramatic enough. I need you to meet me at a very dramatic beach. And he's like, oh, OK, <laughs> real close to the parking lot. He's like, nowhere fucking near. It. We watch <laughs> Kirk. <laughs> walk to this dude for so long. I thought the first thing he was going to say to him is, it's Monty Parthon's flying <laughs> circus. <laughs> it's eight fucking minutes of watching him walk across this fucking beach. Oh, it's, if you've ever done this, it's where you see someone and you wave too early and then you're, and then you have to like continue to do the like, can't talk yet. Do yep. too far they wouldn't be able doing to hear physical it. bits, doing the worm on your way over. <laughs> yeah. And so it, he's like, Dr. Meyer, I appreciate you meeting with me. I really wish we could have done it near a road. He's like, yeah, weird that I didn't choose a road. And he's like, so what's your assessment? Do you like my nuclear power plant? He's like, you know, look, man, it's 1978. I feel like technology has gone about as far as it can realistically go. <laughs> We've reached the pinnacle of mankind's achievements, I tell you. The pinnacle! <laughs> yeah, did you see that car phone? That's pretty nifty. It's tiny! This is a Nobel Prize winning scientist. And yes. he's like, nope, that's the end of science. All that's yep. left is God. <laughs> he's like, what yes. the fuck? <laughs> yes, there's nothing left for science to discover. It's all God now. And, and and apparently he's resigned himself to the, the the fate of death at this point. So we get this moment, and I, I can see how the writer thought in his mind that this was going to be super dramatic, where the water starts to rise around them, and Kirk has to run away because the tide is coming in too quickly, and the whole beach will be washed out. But number one, it never gets above his knees. Right. Right. So it's like knee level water is the danger. Like your shoes are going to be ruined is the danger. Right. Mm -hmm. And number two, this is a thing that actually happens over a very long period of time, say an hour or two. And so you can't actually see it happen. It's just like we see a wave come in and then we see him in ankle deep water. Doing the like, ooch, 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 ooch. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. He's supposed to be washed away the professor guy is washed away by this ankle deep water right or drowns in it yes i guess so it doesn't really it's it never makes it clear it's just like in one shot they're next to each other talking to each other and then he's gone and it's just the sea yes which means somewhere somewhere in this beautiful universe there's the cut footage of them being like Mitch, li lie down. Because <laughs> you're because you're drowning, Mitch. Suck in your belly, though. Your belly's still. We can just yeah. stop saying blub blub. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So he leaves there. He comes home that night in a rainstorm. There's this great moment where Sarah's gonna like help him take off his sports coat, but he's still taking off his overcoat when it happens. And <laughs> there's this weird <laughs> knot 
moment. Anyway, I just I love the blocking in these dumbass movies. I really wanted him to get caught in the coat for like five minutes. Out, out, no, over. You go over. Why am I wearing a three piece suit under two coats? <laughs> but she's like. What's happened? And he's like, yeah, the audience was wondering the same thing. We, we Once we have CGI, you'll be able to do shit like this. But um, but actually, instead of me explaining what's going on, how about we just have some some boob and some ass in this next scene? OK, I need to talk about this sex scene. Kirk is 97 when they shot this scene. 61, I think. Yeah. OK, he is. He looks 97 and he can't do any athletic sex scene stuff. So the sex scene is literally them lying together. Mm -hmm. He runs his finger down her boob like he's going <laughs> to boop it. <laughs> <laughs> and then his old man tushy. Yes, we, we well, we get his old man tushy for a while here in a second. But yeah, there's like a, as though in addition to him hitting his fucking Fitbit goal on camera, he also has like three uh, like contractually obligated boob touches that they were trying to get in all in one scene here. Right. This one really gets you. This is like a, this is a trap for the like a young Christian man watching this movie because you're like, oh, boobs. And then, and then suddenly, <laughs> suddenly you know what comes next. Yeah. Old man dangly yeah. ass. Yes. <laughs> so suddenly we jump into a mid sex scene. We jump into a dream sequence where Franz Joseph dressed as fucking General Zod from the original trilogy is in a salt <laughs> flat. They're trying to rip off the seventh seal and it's like someone tackled him. Right? He's like, look, I'm doing the thing from the seventh seal. And they're like, get the <laughs> fuck out of here, Mitch. This movie sucks. And he's like, fine, fine, I'm leaving. <laughs> and Kirk is following behind him all naked and saggy assed. And then we're just like, oh, wow, I really don't want to see his saggy ass. And they're like, how about from the front? And we're like, oh, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> Until you've watched Michael Douglas's dad's <laughs> flippity floppity <laughs> penis <laughs> bouncing through the desert. <laughs> look, I'm not an in shape or fit person, but when I can look at a movie actor and I'm like, come on, man, do some sit ups before the shot or something. <laughs> and he's running, he's running through sand and he looks like the oldest man trying to run, but his like knees have gone and then his furnace is flopping around and it's just. It's so awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what's amazing is that this is supposed to be this like serious, dramatic, terrifying moment. And we're like, but his dick's out though. <laughs> yeah. Flopping and he's running, right? So his dick is sort of flying off to the side. Yeah. <laughs> it's doing the like bibbidi 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 <laughs> thing. He runs up to the power plant in this moment of like extreme terror. And I really wanted the power plant slash dragon to be like, come on, man, put some pants on. <laughs> I'm, I'm the dark beast that rises from the ocean, but nobody wants to see that, my dude. Is that gold bond? Do you put gold bond on your body? <laughs> so, yeah, so he, sees the, he has this terrible nightmare, and then he goes to Doc, right, from the laser cerebro graviton machine from earlier, and he gets a fucking fancy space MRI. I can't tell if this movie's supposed to be in the... I guess it's Holocaust 2000. I guess this is supposed to be the future... I don't know. Yeah, he's getting an MRI from the claw machine that all power plants <laughs> have. <laughs> and this, by the way, is an MRI meant to diagnose his nightmares. <laughs> ah, the 70s. When it was like, hey, I'm having nightmares. Don't worry, you're just working too hard. Now go have a steak, a cigar, and flop your penis around the beach or something. I don't know. <laughs> Well, it's not even it's not even that it's to diagnose his nightmares exactly. They're just like, oh, everybody has this scan. We do this to every employee in this company. That's and you're just like, why? What are you talking right, about? Yes, and it becomes clear later that they don't look at the results. And you're just, like, I just name one non eugenics reason you would do that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, we've probably just been having too much scotch, and they all fucking laugh because it's like, ah, it's the seventies. We're all fucking drunk all day. It's <laughs> just the point of hallucinating. Yes. So yeah, so so he leaves, and Angel, who was there through this whole thing, I guess he goes with his dad to medical procedures, which is weird. Angel and Doc wander off for a quick HIPAA violation walk and talk, right? <laughs> yep. 
He's like, uh, so my dad's a uh, little, blah, 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 yeah, right? And he's like, yeah, oh, yeah, he's total loon, total lunatic. But it's the 70s, so we just let people be crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll just leave him to it, whatever. <laughs> Google Ronald Reagan's signature, man. It gets weird. It gets really <laughs> weird. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but they're still trying to figure out the Jesus number together, right? And, the, and Doc is like, you know what? Maybe it's referencing a number on the medical files in the computer. And I'm like, that is so much more esoteric than it just trying to spell out Jesus backwards. Okay. <laughs> and Angel, again, who is the Antichrist, is like, huh, maybe it's the card of the devil himself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't look into that. <laughs> just having fun. Don't, though. So, yeah, so, but Doc goes back to Laser Cerebro to check on that. We'll get back to him. It'll be worth the wait. But first, we have to cut to a restaurant where Sarah has invited Kirk and Angel to dinner to tell them that she's pregnant. Okay. This, again, this is just the weirdest performance in the world, but everything Sarah has done up to this point, I was like, she's going to turn out to be a banshee or a demon or something. <laughs> and this scene best supports that argument because she's like, all right, everyone, we're celebrating. I'm going to create some dramatic tension. And phone call. He gets a phone call. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> right. And he's, he's getting a phone call from Doc. Doc is at the computer thing. He's like, hey, I checked that number from the last scene and you're not going to believe what I found. He's like, what did you find? He's like, yeah, if I told you right now, that would just solve the whole fucking movie, wouldn't it? <laughs> so I'm not going to. <laughs> Yeah, he's really fucking deliberately obtuse. He's like, he's like, you have generated something that's not human. It's like nobody in their right mind in the entire universe in any film would say that you generated your child. <laughs> I'm right. He's like, I build nuclear power plants for a living. Of course, I've generated things that aren't human. What the fuck are you talking about? He's like, your nightmare is true. He's like, you mean I am naked on a fucking salt flat with General Zod? You mean one of my last movies I made while I was alive, I included my penis bopping around like a fucking wacky inflatable floating arm tube man? Oh, no. But he's like, no, I have to warn you, the very specific information that you will need to have to survive is click. The phone cuts out. Okay. But again, I just want to talk about this from the Antichrist perspective. Because mm -hmm. Angel has phone clicking power. <laughs> <laughs> so we can assume Angel was overhearing their conversation and he was like, you know, he's being vague enough. I'm going to let him go. I'm going <laughs> to let him go. Let's give him a little bit more rope. And dramatic hang up. Yes. Excellent. Good job, Angel. <laughs> And then he goes back to the table and she's like, I'm pregnant. And he's like, great, let's all celebrate with alcohol. Oh, the drinking. <laughs> oh, no. The drinking. Hey, if you ever met younger listeners, if you ever met an adult, just keep in mind how much our parents drank while we were in their tum tum. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the last time we will see her drink pregnantly. Drink smoke. She's like nine months pregnant at the end. She's still, yeah. By the end of the movie, she's like shooting heroin and she's like, oh, I just hope the baby loves his bottle. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, this is the point where Kirk starts to think, oh, wait a minute. Could she be pregnant with the Antichrist? <laughs> so, all right. So now we have to, th this is by far the best scene in the movie, if you ask. Well, the floppy penis scene is, but this is the next best after the floppy penis. So we cut back to Laser Cerebro. Doc is working very hard at night, that night, he's powering the computer down with a very, the ride is over now kind of sound effect. Mm hmm Right? Kind of a boop, 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 boop. That's how computers shut down. Yeah. But then the computer starts fucking with him. And it's like we're watching the writer try to figure out how a computer could kill this guy. Right? right? <laughs> the, the air conditioning goes on for a second. And I'm like, is the air conditioning sucking out? the air from the room why would they build that in as a feature yeah i so the air the, i think that first the aircon turned off and i was like oh my god he's gonna mildly overheat to death yes. <laughs> and he's like no it's just a weird fake out and then the air conditioning comes back on again and you're like okay what's it doing and when the fucking air conditioner comes on it's com it comes on so strong that papers get sucked into the vents how do they think any of this shit works? <laughs> it like sucks out the warm air is what happened. You fuck anyway. So yeah, but then the and the automatic doors won't work, and then the computer's like, "There's really nothing I can do with the heat 
in the air conditioner. I guess I'll just put that back to normal. It opens the door for him and he goes to walk out, but then it closes the door partially, trips him, and then closes on his back to to death. <laughs> and we watch the actor be like, that, am I supposed to be dead right now? Oh, I, I am. Ah! <laughs> is it, it going to cut me in half in post? Or? That slight pane of glass landing on my tushy. <laughs> It's so gentle. He's like really gently squished to death and the door looks so thin. It's like Perspex is just gently resting on his back and then he's like, oh, dead. They, they might as well just lay one of those things they use to separate your groceries from the next person's groceries on his back. I'm dead. And in case you thought this was just some regular computer accident, the screen, the light bright screen flashes backwards Jesus again, you know, so you know who was at fault here. It's like a calling card. <laughs> yeah, I signed in this yeah. fucking work or something here. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. There aren't many high points to this movie, so we're going to take this chance for a break while we've got it. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will the nuclear power plant turn out to be the dragon of revelation? What the fuck could that possibly mean? Why would a god be cryptic about something as important as the end of the goddamn world? Find out the answers to different questions and more when we return for the Technicolor conclusion of The Chosen. Seriously, you guys do not have to make me dinner. Oh, of course we do, especially after Eli tried to hit you with his car. Which, again, I apologize for. I was feeling threatened because your jokes were funny. Yeah, and, and, and since you're British, we thought you might really enjoy some HelloFresh. What's HelloFresh? Three points. E yes, Eli, three points. On a Eli, with HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Right, but unlike British cuisine, we only cook the food for a limited amount of time, Emma. Limited. Exactly. Of time. Yeah. yeah. HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients to your door, including farm-fresh produce that arrives within a week, so you get convenience without skimping on quality. Skip the trip to the grocery store, save the wait in line, and ensure that you don't waste money on excess food. Or, you know, whatever you have instead of a grocery store. We have grocery stores in England. You've been there several times, haven't you? No, I mean, not to the grocery store parts we haven't. No, we haven't been to there. Plus, according to the Zagat Dining Survey, HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. And you can save, on average, over 65 per month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. That's money back in your pocket. Or as you'd call it... Pocket. We call them pockets. Mm. Disappointing. Huh. Disappointing. Yeah, HelloFresh sent us a box to try, and the meals were delicious and took literally seconds to unpack. Just go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use code Awful16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. All right, or as you might say it, go to HelloFresh.com slash okay. Awful16 and use code Awful16 for up to 16 free meals and free free gifts. Right, well, I appreciate the thought at least. Cool. Now, would you say that we're close enough at this point for prank websites? No. Right. Yeah. No, me too. What's a prank website? That's four points, isn't it? Wow. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Drucker, thanks so much for coming in. No problem. So uh, what we're about to tell you may seem impossible, but we believe that the supercomputer has gained sentience. Really? Yes, yes. We were running some sums this morning, and it, well, it said hello. Hello. Hello, computer. Mm. Guys, that's point seven seven three four. It's just a number that looks like a word. It's not actually a word. Or is it reaching out for a friend? We are friend, computer. Good friend, computer. We come in peace. No, guys, it's just numbers on a screen. Look, five, three, one, eight, zero, zero, eight. Boobies. Do you think the computer has boobies now? My God, Drucker. Exactly. You apologize to the sentient computer for your sexual harassment right now. So not cool. Not cool. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. And it's time for this movie to earn its place on GAM, I guess. Because this is where Kirk goes back to that priest from Act 1 to sort of fill him in on all the Act 2 stuff. Okay, why does he not have a full-size Bible? 
Oh, yeah. You see how the priest is reading that tiny little Psalms book or whatever? Yeah, I think it's going to be like they do those little books of Psalms. We got given those in school. I remember the little tiny ones. But I will say at this point, I noted that he probably has the best eyesight of anyone in the film, though, <laughs> right. because everybody else that is around his age has a moment where they've forgotten to put their glasses on, including Kirk Douglas, like several times. Yeah. So maybe that's the point. Maybe it's like he reads tiny books because he's the only one that can see clearly. (laughs) Well, but the other thing too is because it's the little Psalms book that he has, but like he has regular sized Bibles that have the book of Psalms in them. (laughs) He's just showing off. Yeah, right. Exactly. So they have a chat, but we're not privy to that check. We cut immediately to another conversation where... Kirk is walking with Sarah. There, like that, it was like a scene fake. They're just out walking together. She's, you know, being pregnant. He's being charming. It's the 1970s. He's like, "Do you want to see a doctor?" And she's like, "No, I'm not sick." And I was like, "Ah, the 70s, where <laughs> being pregnant didn't mean you had to see a doctor as long as nothing was wrong." Jesus Christ. So yeah, and of course they're chatting about way too nonchalantly that weird ass death from the previous scene right before the interstitial she's like you know did they ever figure out what happened to doc and he's like i don't even think the fucking writers knew to be honest <laughs> he was uh butt slapped by a <laughs> piece of perspective you know the little thing that you use to separate your groceries from the person behind you yeah <laughs> so and then he, he's like hey let's walk up to that charming little church and she's like no i won't walk up to a church with you and you're like oh it's because she's satan spoiler alert it's because she doesn't want to walk up to that fucking church. <laughs> yeah, it's because she's explicit about it too. She's like, I'm pregnant and I'm really tired and you're acting fucking crazy. So let's let's not. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm with Sarah through 100% of this film. Yes. Even when I oh, thought she amen. might be Satan, I'm still with Sarah. I literally wrote in my notes, Prego wife has the same reaction to going to church that I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You said you were an agnostic. We're not doing this. <laughs> so- But apparently, so she runs away. She just runs off, gets in the car and drives off without him. And then the priest walks out from like, what, behind the fucking bushes where he's been the whole time? (laughs) This priest will come from sillier and sillier places. Yeah, he's always just hiding behind something just out of sight. He's like Inspector Gadget's boss at a certain point. I thought in the third scene we saw him and he was going to like pop out from under his coat. (laughs) I was listening the whole time. Yeah, he comes out and he's like, yep, she's Satan and carrying the Antichrist almost certainly. He's like, oh, it's a dangerous piece of information to give me there. So Kirk and the priest go back to check the fucking devil baby literature he has on hand. And he explains that the second son will be the Antichrist. Which is not in the Bible, but I super wish it was (laughs) so that you could just be like, Hey, I'm Greg Antichrist. Yes, my brother is the Antichrist. I work (laughs) at Jiffy Lube. So please, if you have something about him putting a mark on your forehead, do not come to me about it. (laughs) I only see him at Christmas. I also love, like, he just recently told Angel that he had a little brother, right? That, that like died as a baby. He definitely already had two sons. Yes. He's just completely forgotten or doesn't idea think that it matters. Like what? I don't understand how he's forgotten about one of his children. Right. I I, I wrote in, the, in my notes. I'm like, oh, but Angel was the second son. The characters in the movie will not realize this until the end for some fucking reason. Mm hmm. So but Kirk is laughing at how silly the plot is. And the priest says, hey, wait a minute. Haven't you noticed that everybody who tries to stop you from building this nuclear power plant dies? And he's like, aren't you trying to stop me from making the nuclear power plant right now? Dead man walking. I what are you trying? I don't understand why you would say that. And he's like, but, you know, you saw that Sarah is evil. Look how she reacted to the church. And I'm like, OK, well, then now you're calling me no illusions, the Antichrist. I don't like this at all. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or you're calling me pregnant with the Antichrist. I don't know. <laughs> Can we talk about how quickly back and forth throughout this whole movie as well, not just this scene, Kane goes from I don't really believe in this religious crap to 
crazy religious conspiracy theorist. He's just like, he's just like, no, nah, that sounds kind of ridiculous. And he's like, but actually this photo is of the monster that's going to take over the world. And you're like, <laughs> what do you believe right now? Right, yeah, right. This is silly enough to laugh at, but also serious enough to kill my unborn fucking child. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the only evidence he has that his wife is carrying the Antichrist is that she didn't want to walk up a hill. And we are two scenes away from him <laughs> trying to scoop out his kid with an ice cream machine. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so yeah so yeah that night sarah's puking because it's a movie and she's pregnant right and it's the 70s so she's like i'm sorry for my morning sickness and he's like i forgive you yeah right <laughs> throw up a little quieter <laughs> don't let it happen again rude so, yeah but kirk is like so abortion huh it's pretty nifty stuff we were a much more progressive time now huh <laughs> you and my how about one of them abortions i've heard so much about you know they take a, a brand new hoover matic and stick it up there <laughs> and bing bang boom he's so fucking creepy about it and like sarah's starting to freak out and i'm just like this is the point where you fucking run yes like he's like maybe we should get rid of the baby and then he's like fucking all over her and then he's like she's like okay well i you know, me and the baby will just go then. It's okay if you don't want to be with me. And he's like, don't leave me. And just like holding her like a little child. It's so <laughs> weird. I didn't realize you were going to be so emotional about me trying to kill your unborn baby. Fine, we'll have a kid. Jeez. <laughs> Jesus. Women. And also, but either Kirk Douglas is a terrible fucking actor or he was all the way dialing this one in, right? This, that, his like, oh no, but don't leave. That was the most half hearted bullshit perfunctory, oh, but please don't though, that I have ever fucking seen in film. Yeah. If you've ever been broken up by someone who you're planning on breaking up with, that's the performance <laughs> Kirk Douglas is giving. <laughs> what? Oh, you no. want to see other people? Oh, crazy. No. And so, okay. So the next day at work, Kirk is yelling at his lackeys and angrily rattling papers, but in a bad way, not a good way, like when Angel did it, right? Yeah. He's basically, he's yelling at them that they need to build the nuclear power plant in the least apocalyptic way possible. <laughs> right? Okay. Is there a way we can just make everything backwards so that it's extra Jesus-y, this power plant? <laughs> And the board members, he runs away and the board members turn to Angel and they're like, hey, man, is your dad um, fucking nuts now? And he's like, yeah, he does kind of seem fucking nuts now. Right. <laughs> Once again, we're all in agreement with the bad guys in the movie. They're like, OK, so the guy who's in charge of the again, let's emphasize this nuclear power plant is afraid that it's going to be a accidental seven headed demon from a fucking Bronze Age prophecy. Let's not let him be in charge anymore. And we, the audience, are supposed to go like, oh, no. You know, the one guy who saw it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, to be fair to those guys, it's like his emotional change is that now he's ranting that he wants the nuclear plant to be safe. And that's what he's like, it's got to be safe. <laughs> right. It's got to be safe. And they're just like, this this project is too this dangerous to be in the hands of someone who wants right it to be here. safe. <laughs> 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 <Just> <laughs> Good point. And then so, okay, then we cut to Kirk driving Sarah to her OBGYN. My favorite scene in the movie. My least favorite. This scene gave me anxiety. I hated it all the way through. <laughs> I was like screaming. This is some terrifying shit. So like I wrote as a joke in my notes when this scene started, man, she has the look of uh, someone half expecting a surprise abortion clinic. Which she should have more than half expected. Yes, exactly. My naive ass thought that couldn't possibly be the scene we were about to watch. And they're just, they can't stop doing ominous stuff. Like she pulls up at the door and it's one dead baby lane. <laughs> <laughs> he might as well have, as she's walking down the hall, he might as well, you know how people have like deer's heads on like a plaque? Oh, no! Fetus heads on little plaques as she's walking into the office. <laughs> I don't know about this place. So, so he sends her in the room and then the pop-up priest just pokes his head out of one random door. He says, it's for the bastards. It's like, where the fuck did you come from? I was waiting inside this abortion clinic. Hello. <laughs> oh, why though? She gives him this look like my pug does when I take her and they put her in the back at the vet. It's just like, how dare you? <laughs> 
Also, I just we have to emphasize because this has got to be a god awful movie. First, we're watching a scene where a priest is trying to use an abortion to thwart the plan that God laid down. This is interesting, right? Mm hmm. But yeah, so she realizes at the last second that they're going to try to like trick her into getting an abortion. They're going to drug her and sedate her or whatever and, and abort her fetus. She's looking at all the scary, not at all realistic abortion tools. It's just like the baby crusher 5000. She's like, what do I need the baby crusher? For? Like 10 different sizes of knife. And oh, my yes, God. Right. It's yes. So including scary. a machete. Yeah. There is. A li- Thank you, Noah. There is a literally a butcher's cleaver. Yes. Li- and one of the things is a butcher's cleaver. And look, I know the 1970s wasn't exactly the pinnacle of medical science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but she fights back. She grabs, interestingly enough, not the cleaver, just a tiny little scalpel. And she, she holds him at bay. Kirk tries to grab her. She cuts the fuck out of him. All my notes are just go, Sarah, go, Sarah, go, Sarah. Yeah. All of our notes are identical. Mine are <laughs> karate, go, Sarah, get him. Fuck yeah, Sarah, karate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. But she gets out the door and goes full fucking Batman, right? Cause Kirk pops out like two seconds later. She's gone. Yeah. This is not the first time, again, they do this through the whole movie. They're like, oh, it's like she has mysterious power. No, I'm just kidding. It's just she was just fast for a pregnant lady is all. I think Sarah's just a magician. That would make sense. She like she's able to disappear and appear in the fog. And, and you think it's like something sinister, but it's like, no, nah, she's just when you're trying to run away from your crazy boyfriend and like a OBGYN trying to rip out your unborn baby you move fucking fast like yeah that's true you're, she's probably more motivated get out of the country change your name <laughs> good god yeah so so all right so we cut to kirk he's back home and he's brooding over the jesus number with with angel some more right the what could it possibly mean the two to the square root of 231 and Angel's like, so, hey, where's Sarah? And he's like, yeah, that's a great question, right? Like, where is anybody, really, when you think about it? Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so Kirk takes his notebook to Laser Cerebro again, right? Yeah. And he has the what if it's the number for a medical file idea that Doc had right before he died. I would love to hear how their medical system works, that any of the cards are 30.276043. Well, and also that like they have a system set up where all you have to do is punch in a fucking random eight digit number and someone's complete medical records pop out of the printer for you. (laughs) Yeah, I would like a password protection system here somewhere. This is before HIPAA, when you would just be like, what the fuck's the wrong with you? Well, and also, man, holy shit, what a fast printer, right? <laughs> to this day, they don't go oh. that damn quick. It's a dot matrix printer. He types in the number and immediately all the records pop right out. Okay. Crazy billionaire remake. This movie, shot for shot, except it's just a regular dot matrix printer. So he's like, <laughs> 17 minutes of him being like, all right, it's there's like it's, an it's A. Why would you draw a picture <laughs> on it? God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but Doc also left a message for Kirk hiding in the computer. Apparently he thought, you know, what if I get killed mysteriously by that thing that separates the groceries before I get a chance to tell him? So he put this into the computer. Now, keep in mind that this was before he called him. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't even register that. He called him on the phone after he did this shit, but whatever. Anyway, he puts into the computer. He says, hey, man, your son Angel has no heartbeat or brainwaves. He's not human. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, he has no heartbeat or brainwaves. He must be a Republican. But (laughs) Jesus. I just like did they did they not pick up on that when he was born when well, he was like a, at a child point. somebody's got to notice that he's not going to fucking heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> this is the thing nobody went to the doctor in the 70s that could be used as a revelation in a movie. It was like yeah why would you ever check someone's heartbeat? What are you married? <laughs> but also they got they made a point of everybody in this company does this full body medical scan and it's like it reported that this guy's technically dead and just nobody noticed. Nobody's reading the reports. There's no fucking point to any of it other than right. to print out later. Oh, yeah, by the way, your son's not human. Well, right. And keep in mind that the guy who runs that machine is Doc. 
Yeah. Right? It's the guy that is leaving him this note that was surprised by this information. We, because you would think that if you, you do a medical scan on somebody and find literally no evidence that they live and exist in the world, you'd be like, oh, the machine's fucking broke. We need a new claw machine, <laughs> but not this place. Yeah. So... Anyway, so Angel goes back home now Now that his dad knows this information about him. Angel goes back home. Sarah apparently is staying with him at the moment. I yelled. Oh, oh. my God. I, I saw Sarah and I was like, no, no, what are you doing? Get the fuck out. What she's doing, though, is drinking alcohol. He likes, he's like, can I fix you a drink? And she's like, you sure the fuck can? <laughs> It's a wonder that any of us was born with an even number of digits back then. Jesus. And again, this scene makes sense if she is carrying the devil baby and Angel is in on it, but she is not. So the Antichrist is just like, yeah, I'm sorry. Kirk Douglas was an asshole. No one should go through a forced abortion. I'm the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but we zoom in on his eyes and play ominous music. So we know he has a terrible plan in mind, although we will never know what the fuck it is. But yeah. So now, so Kirk goes back. Now he's explaining to the priest that Angel was actually the second son. And like, we really should have thought about this before. Had all the viewers <laughs> picked up on it. So <laughs> why the fuck didn't he mention that earlier? Yeah. Just why? This is also where he reveals the dramatic death. It's that the older brother was strangled by his umbilical cord at birth. And I wrote in my notes, sorry, at birth? That feels more like a doctor problem than Angel. <laughs> Nurse, I, I'm going to wrap this cord around the other baby for a second. Give me one. Well, also, like, it, it, it sounds like it's not dramatic unless, like, unless you imagine the little one baby tugging on his umbilical cord and, like, pushing a foot against the other baby or something. I just Oh, <laughs> Hitman. There's another great Hitman reference. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes about, then he dresses up as the other baby and they're having the comic down. Absolutely. <laughs> Hides him in a little closet or something. <laughs> no one will ever look in. Oh. Yeah, so, but Kirk is going to confront Angel about being the inhuman Antichrist, damn it. But before he does, he turns to the priest and he says, this envelope will, will solve the movie. I entrust it to you, priest that I met on a plane that was ranting about the end of the world a couple of weeks ago. It's a backseas nuclear power plant letter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. The only thing r less realistic than Kirk Douglas's ability to call back to on this nuclear power plant is this random priest handing in a letter to undo a <laughs> nuclear power plant. <laughs> so I, have a, I brought a note. I brought a note. So Kirk goes to a, the, the office and damn it if Angel isn't sitting at his desk having already taken over the company. Oh. And this is a great opportunity for another five minute just stare off. Oh my God. Between the two men just staring. Yep. Slowly, slowly walking closer. Yeah. So uh, Kirk says to Angel, he's like, hey man, what are you doing sitting at my desk? He's like, well, I'm in charge of the company now that you've had a nervous breakdown. He says, I didn't have a nervous breakdown. And I'm like, dude, we just all watched you try to force abort a fetus because you were pretty sure it was the Antichrist. Okay. Yeah. Your wife had to fight you off with a scalpel and he's like, ah, it's the 1970s. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, God. And he's like, you realize, but by doing what you're trying to do, you could blow up the earth. And he's like, yeah, you know what? The earth had it coming. Walk it off. I wrote in my notes because he says better to run towards a great Holocaust. And I wrote, "Ooh, that's Boris Johnson's latest COVID guidance. Too. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get this amazing leaping yelling strangle attempt like like imagine if choking was a projectile <laughs> <laughs> if you have no heartbeat or brain activity i feel like strangling is probably not a big deal for you <laughs> oh no i won't have any heartbeat or brain activity dad think it through <laughs> he's got the worst short-term memory in the world that's got to be what yeah, it right? is <laughs> he's the memento guy that's the reveal <laughs> so <laughs> But it's like, 
it's another like really gently choreographed fight scene. I don't know if it's just they're trying to be like go easy on Kirk Douglas, but they're just like holding each other's faces and just yes! squishing them rather than like fight. Yes, and rolling back and forth. Yes, yes because this. <laughs> This man who is under the age of 90 is having to pretend to be choked to death by Kirk Douglas. <laughs> My toddler occasionally tackles me and wrestles me, and I do a better acting job than Angel does here of being like, oh, I sure am getting attacked by your frail old <laughs> liver spotted fingers, Kirk Douglas, let me tell you. And then we have one of the weirdest, like, I need to know the backstory on this moment of the entire movie, right? Because this is when several board members break in, find him, like, rolling around on the ground trying to strangle Angel. And one of them has a syringe full of, like, three-second knockout juice just on him, right? Like, in case he needs that. Why the fuck would some old guy at a nuclear power plant company have that? Yes. Great question. <laughs> but yeah, so, but they knock him out with their drugs and then an ambulance drives him away. But it's a, it's a silly British ambulance. So as a silly siren. Ah, the seventies when an ambulance was just a Ford Fiesta with the back seat taken out. <laughs> <laughs> and it was either like right outside the entire time or the priest was chilling in the car for like an hour. Right. Yep. Because he's still just there sat in the car that they were in earlier. Oh my god, you're right. He is like a like a dog that's been left there on a hot day and <laughs> yeah. can't get out or something. Yes. Starts scratching at the window. <laughs> so yeah, so he watches on in horror as they take uh Kirk away in the ambulance. Then we cut to Sarah. She's at the clinic having the baby with about as much difficulty as my average bowel movement. <laughs> right. This was a speed birth, right? This was like the speed run version of birthing a child, right? Yeah. She's just like, ooh, and then a baby exists. Yes! Like a, like a yeah. five-month-old baby is just there. The doctor leans down and he's like, Madam, if you would like your one scream, you're allowed to do it now. Like, <laughs> yep! And then she has a baby. Yeah, yeah. So she has her baby, and then we cut over to Kirk, who is being wheeled into one of those all-window asylums from before that, that Franz Joseph was at. Crazy people fish tank. Yeah. It's it's the same one, right? It's the exact same oh, that's right. yeah. cube that he was in earlier. That's right, yeah. So, And then we cut to the priest. Now, the priest has the envelope that'll solve the whole movie, but he has to get it to Geneva, so he just wears... God, another hitman moment, right? He just wears <laughs> Kirk Douglas's hat and coat and gets out of his plane, and everybody's like, oh, Kirk Douglas, well, why would you... You look like a completely different person today. <laughs> so, uh, it's a proper, like... Superman Clark Kent kind of situation. He's just like holding this coat shell with this little hat on. He's like, yep, that's me, Mr. Kane. <laughs> yeah, all white people look the same, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But so they go to take off and we have this amazing slow motion plane crash, right? Because they're, they're going down the runway. Plane won't take off. And the co-pilot's like, hey, man, take off. And the pilot's like, oh, I wish I'd thought of that. You fucking asshole. <laughs> Shut up. I'm trying. It won't work. He's like, you take off. He's like, my controls won't work either. He's like, well, I sure hope they didn't put a goddamn wall at the end of this runway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're narrating the crash as they go. It's like, plane, go up. Up, plane, up. <laughs> and they don't radio anybody either. They're just like, they're just like, oh, fuck, what are we doing? Oh, shit, yes. this is never, we haven't trained for this. Oh, it's the 1970s. And in the back, you've just got the priest in the back who's just like listening and he's just like got this face of just... Oh, bugger. And he like, gets oh. his cross out. And he's like, oh, this is it. I just ordered the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you know, look, I don't want to tell you guys how to do your jobs, but maybe we turn right uh, or left <laughs> <laughs> away. From... Brakes, maybe? Do you guys have brakes? No. Or... <laughs> but yes, they explode. Finally get a goddamn explosion. And then Kirk wakes up in a straitjacket in the insane asylum. And damn it, if Franz Joseph isn't there. Now, the last time we saw this guy, he committed suicide. So I was assuming this was a dream sequence. It's not. No, the movie forgot. Okay. <laughs> Franz gags. Apparently he has run of the asylum now. Franz gags him, straps him to this bed and, and wheels him off into a padded room. I'd like to throw out there. He doesn't gag him. He puts a handkerchief in his mouth. But I guess they didn't invent spitting out things till 1982. <laughs> so he is, in fact, gagged. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's effectively gagged him. Yes. 
it's so bizarre. They like, he like travels through half the facility. He spends like one second being like, oh, there's some dudes up there. And you know, it's glass. So if he can see them, pretty sure they should be able to see him. Right. But just, no, he's just, <laughs> it's just really easy to break in and out of this like mental facility, I guess. And he's just like, yeah, no, whatever. I'll steal this patient. Nobody, <laughs> nobody cares. I mean, yeah, 1978 asylum. Yeah, probably though. But yeah. yeah. Lou, 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 just wheeling the guy through a uh, hospital. Lou, Lou, Lou. And so he takes him to this padded room and there's a bunch of guys there waiting in the padded room to. So so I don't want to say attack him because they kind of just like throw him up and down like the drunken half of a bar mitzvah. <laughs> OK, for a while. OK, the only possible explanation for this scene is that they surprised these extras with it. <laughs> is that they rolled them in and they were like, and then off camera, they were like, kill Kirk Douglas. I want you all to really literally kill Kirk Douglas right now, please. <laughs> At one point, they raspberry his tummy. Yeah, they say, I, say, like, I wrote in my notes, it's like, it, this is, he's, it looks unpleasant. <laughs> so, <laughs> they snap him with towels like a middle school locker room. At one point, somebody scratches him out of the face and I'm like, okay, well, now they've gone too far. But that's like, like when I rough play with my cats too much or something level of consequences, <laughs> right? And they're giggling. They're, they're giggling the entire time like little schoolgirls. They're like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> giggling crazily. Yeah. But then Kirk Douglas grabs a two by four. Why the fuck is there a two by four in this padded <laughs> goddamn room? Great question. I, just no answer. It was two by four day at the mental hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so he starts fighting them off, whacking them with his board. And it's just like you could see all of the crazy people going like, dude, we were giving you raspberries and shit. You're hitting people with boards. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> he very graphically smooshes a guy's head. They're like, yes, oh, and we're going to make you crowd surf over us. And then he just like <laughs> fucking sp splats a guy's head like you embarrassed the kingpin in front of his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and and then walks out. They're just like, just well, if you're going to smush heads, then yeah. What they, apparently he's just, I, maybe that's why we saw the dramatic him walking out scene from before so we'd know that he knows the way. I don't I don't know, but he just leaves. Or just how easy it is to go in and out with no consequence. I guess, yeah. This is, we're still supposed to be rooting for this guy. And he's like, he's beat a guy to death. He's tried to force his girlfriend into an abortion. Like, he's an absolute psycho crazy dude. Right, he even gave up on the nuclear power plant that we were all behind. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking asshole. So now we cut back to the clinic where Sarah is. Now, apparently, I guess this is part of the Antichrist's plan is to kill off her kid by having someone poison all the babies at that hospital. Okay. And like, look, I get it that this is Antichrist magic, but this is partly on the 1970s for having the baby killing poison right next to the baby vitamin. Thank you. In identical <laughs> bottles. <laughs> in identical bottles. It totally was. This is why we have the the term SIDS, my friends, because the 70s didn't want to be like, yeah, I think we find a fucking sucked guy. <laughs> we'll just call it sudden Jeez. infant death syndrome. So, but now, but Sarah shows up right before they can poison her baby to death. She shows up and she's like, you know what? I want to hold him while you give all these other babies bottles. And the nurse is like, why the fuck would you want to do that? <laughs> right. The 70s. Yeah, she's like, because my magic mom sense is tingling. Every time something absolutely fucking awful is about to happen, I get this weird feeling. This is why it's, I totally thought at this point, by the way, that she was going to give birth to Jesus. Oh, Ooh. there you go. Because oh, the, the, this baby was Jesus. Just because, like, how does she, how does she know? She always knows and manages to save the baby. Well, yeah, but I feel like, okay, so if there's already been an attempt, like this is like, this is like Sarah Connor having her kid, right? Like she, she shows mm. up and she's like, you know, they've been trying to kill this kid since way before he was born. I feel like I'm going to hold on to him for now. So that makes sense to me. I get it. Well, yeah, until Kane shows up and then she's like, oh, hey, you can hold the baby. Right. That you tried to kill earlier. Yeah, don't worry, it can't be the Antichrist, it's a girl. And he's like, wow, they're valueless. That's fine then, I guess. <laughs> he staggers over to her, covered in blood, with yes. the sleeves off his shirt, and he's like, I'm sorry about trying to kill the baby, can I hold it? And she's like, yeah, sure, no, absolutely. <laughs> I just can't stay mad at you, you lug. Yeah, he looks like he just turned into a fucking werewolf, and she's like, yeah, sure, give him a hug. 
And everyone else in the hospital is just like, oh, you know, he's it's the dad. He's showing up all beat up like he just turned back from a werewolf. <laughs> but then all okay, so I this is this isn't funny, but the way they do it is fucking funny. It's very fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> all the babies in the maternity ward die because they all have just been poisoned. But the way we learn this is that we hear someone in the background. <laughs> Oh my God, all the babies in the maternity ward have died because they all got poisoned. (laughs) Right. And then they really hit this home with footage of very obviously sleeping toddlers. (laughs) Just with their face like. (laughs) There's no way to kill the gravitas of your all the babies are dead scene than a toddler like with the ass up in the air and their head pressed against the edge of the crib. (laughs) And Kirk goes. We better get out of here. It's like, why, dude? Were you involved in this? Like, running from the scene where a bunch of babies just died does not make you look good. Don't worry. It's the 1970s. We're just allowed to leave the hospital whatever the fuck we want. (laughs) But before they can leave, though, Kirk passes out. He passes out, and she's like, doctor, doctor. And they're like, lady, we're a little busy with all the dead babies. And she's like, right? No, that's fair. I mean, they're dead. What are you going to do? But yeah, okay, fine. (laughs) So, oh, God. And then we cut to Angel. He's got his board meeting going, which the soundtrack would like to assure us is very climactic. Okay. This is where he announces that he's going to enhance this council from 12 people to 21. (laughs) I wanted so badly for someone to be like, I'm I'm sorry, why? (laughs) (laughs) It's because it's the reverse of 12. The opposite Jesus thing. The the opposite of 12 would be negative 12. Shut up. Shut up. Do you know who you're fire hiring? No, I'll figure it out. <laughs> There's just like this 20 of them. And they're just like, oh, I'm sorry. Dan was Dan was sick today. And like, fuck, just bring in a receptionist or something. It's got to be 21. Uh, that guy walking by outside. Hey, sir, do you want to be on a board of a nuclear power plant? Shh, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> And he also announces, because that's not silly enough, he goes, and it will be revealed on my 33rd birthday. Yes! (laughs) Um, Hi, Annie Christ. Uh, Jesus was not killed on his 33rd birthday. He was 33, (laughs) but it wasn't his fucking birthday. (laughs) No, that's Christmas. Then Christmas and Easter would be the same fucking day. That'd fuck it all up. I'm just picturing the crucifixion. (laughs) He's being whipped by a Roman soldier. Uh, By the way, today is my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Wait, wait, no, we can sing. We can sing. Hold on. We're going (laughs) to sing. Let me get the guy. One, two, three. (laughs) It is your birthday, son. Sorry, we do a whole thing. (laughs) <laughs> now you gotta wear this hat. That's why they put the crown of thorns on him. Because it was his birthday. <laughs> we got your spear on the side. All right. So then, oh, so that's over. Now, this is where our versions might diverge, right? Because there is an alternate ending to this apparently. It looks like, it looks like we all got the same ending, but there is an alternate ending. But this is where we cut to Kirk. Now, he lives in a desert cave with canvas walls now. Yep. He's like, he's like in a big tent with a chalkboard. Yes. Very confusing. He has a chalkboard where he's trying to work out that mysterious Jesus myth. Like, you already figured out this is medical file. You already figured out that clue, you fucking idiot. So, and then, oh, oh my God, the scariest part of this movie, right? The part where she hands Kirk Douglas that baby, that real live human baby. Oh, and he is yeah. not supporting the neck, my guy. Oh. <laughs> not remotely. His hand sort of hovers near the head for one second, and you're like, yes, support the head, support the head. And he's like, nah, nah, I'm gonna, it's a baby. Yeah. It's fine. Lolling around like my fucking penis from that other scene earlier. <laughs> Jesus. I will say the tension of this final like close-up is undercut by the baby very obviously trying to latch on Kirk Douglas's <laughs> nose. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, but then he... Fucking flashes back to all the people chanting, what do we want to children to be when they grow up alive thing? I'm like, oh my God, they end on that and we fade out. That's it. That's they that go it. into their cave house now and, and we fade away. Yeah, they're just gonna they're they're just gonna let the world end. Apparently. Like, whatever, you know, what can we do? What can we do? Yeah, you know, hey, we got our kid, so you know. I so okay, so that's the thing that what was the moral of the story? Like, I know it was kind of like anti-nuclear in a sense, but was there a moral that we can pull from this? Michael is not the worst aging Douglas. Okay. All right. That's fair. 
All right. Well, I'll tell you what, Emma, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I know we'll ask an awful lot of our, our guest masochists. If our listeners wanted to hear more from you, where should they go? You can just stick my name, Emma Thorne, into YouTube and uh, you can find me there and, and click on all my things and uh, see more. Awesome. Awesome. Or check the show notes for the episode. Obviously, we'll have everything linked there as well. And while that does it for our review of The Chosen, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to recommit to this program. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, we'll be doing one of the most requested god-awful movies ever. Really? The plague of what I am assured is many, many church lock-ins We'll be watching the rock opera oh, no. written by a member of the Newsboys, exclamation point hero. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> all right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 343 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn only access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scaling Atheist, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices P. Andrew Torres, Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and Camille Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Ethan Wright and Eli Bosnick, I'm an illusionist. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Freeze frame on the little baby, and I want the baby to look at the camera and just give a little wink, and it's got a little crucifix or a thorny crown. It's like, it's like, don't worry, boss. It's all part of the plan. <laughs> Sarah had Kirk castrated at a fake prostate exam as revenge. <laughs> Kirk gave a whole new meaning to falling down. <laughs> <laughs> oh god isn't that the truth uh, hit some a of the hard. emails i get jeez right. yep welcome to the club <laughs> and well sorry i shouldn't say welcome to the club because you're a woman on the internet right yeah so, so the emails you get are way scarier than the worse. shit we get so. <laughs> uh. the preceding podcast was a production of puzzle and a thunderstorm llc copyright 2022 all rights reserved